Okay, today we're talking tips. This was a user request from Kira down in the comments. So here we go. Maladaptive daydreaming develops in a lot of ways and everyone kind of experiences it differently. So not everything's gonna work for everyone. It's, it's kind of a you know shotgun method. Just throw a lot of things at it and see what sticks. But there are some standard things that will apply to just about anyone and we're gonna run through those. Most of what's in this video is gonna be stuff that's been recommended by the researchers. So you might've heard it before. But there's, there's a reason it keeps getting repeated. It helps. It does. I think it's just sort of a human trait to kind of gloss over lists like that and try to find that one weird magic bullet that's just going to help us improve in leaps and bounds without a whole lot of effort. But that's just, it's just not going to happen. At least it's not likely to happen. I don't know. Some people get lucky. Number one, get a therapist. Probably not what you were hoping for, I know. But I would be completely remiss if therapy was not the first recommendation for a mental health issue. And don't worry if the therapist hasn't heard of it. It doesn't matter that it's not in the DSM. It doesn't matter that it's not an official thing. Describe your symptoms as best you can. Maybe read some of the research papers and, and go through some of the posts in the community to get a good language for how to describe what you're going through. Because that seems to be where a lot of people fall apart. But I think some of those instances can be cleared up just by being able to express your concerns better. So focus on your symptoms and your concerns and just see where that conversation takes you, even if they have no idea what it is, even if they've never encountered anything like you before. They are trained to help people figure this out for themselves, and they've got a whole tool bag on how to deal with a lot of the issues that maladaptive daydreamers deal with. But I know a lot of you aren't in the position where you can easily get into therapy if you're not in it already. So some things that you can do on your own. Tip two, avoid your triggers. This can be really difficult, especially depending on what your triggers are. But the, the big ones are music and being alone. You can limit how often you listen to music and it, it kind of sucks, but you get past it and you know maybe one day you'll actually be able to listen to music and appreciate it for the art it is. Music, it, it can trigger maladaptive daydreaming, but it mostly works to maintain and enhance. Even cutting out music from every corner of your life is not going to stop maladaptive daydreaming, but it will help to take the edge off and it will help to keep the sessions shorter. And then for something like being alone, you do kind of have to push yourself into being a bit more social or just getting outside, even even just grocery shopping. You know, that's 30 minutes maybe where you're in the public eye where other people can see you so you're not daydreaming as deeply. Do try to reach out with your friends, you know, don't blow off that text for the third day in a row. Just get around to replying them. Social relationships do take a bit of effort. You're not going to rush out and get a BFF overnight, but just sending a text or commenting on somebody's photo or or accepting that invitation that you kind of were planning on not going to. Those all go a long way into rebuilding a social network. And for those of us that don't have any triggers or everything's a trigger, which I am one myself, so don't I understand. That is true, but but there are things, you know, there's things that make it easier to daydream, that make it stronger. Just start with those. Three, address underlying issues. You might not even know what they are yet. Way to find out. Stop daydreaming. I know, right? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Bear with me here. Just go ahead and decide that you are not going to daydream for one week. Commit to it. Do it. I promise this is not going to go well. <laughs> but that's the point. When you completely stop like that, it is jarring. And what's going to happen is a lot of feelings are going to come up. The goal of this exercise is not to make it to day seven. The goal is to push yourself enough to see what comes out when you're not daydreaming. So just pay attention. Pay attention to your body and your emotions. Maybe get a little notebook and start writing things down. There is going to be frustration and irritability that boils up because you're denying yourself this thing. But there might also be anxiety or depression or complete boredom or hyperactivity. And this can give you a clue as to what's really driving it, or at least helping to drive it. And then kind of based on what you figure out about yourself during this time period, it'll give you a new angle to kind of go at things from. And you kind of have to go at these at the same time. If you try to just curb the bad maladaptive daydreaming habits while not working on these other things, you're just not going to make that much progress. If maladaptive daydreaming is your coping technique for something else, it's worth it to explore alternative coping techniques, which are not detrimental to your life. Four, mindfulness. 
it is not a thing that you have to do alone in your room in lotus position. It, no. The trick is to kind of incorporate it into your everyday life. There are mindfulness exercises for a lot of things that you can just do. Eating, walking, sitting around. This should not be a practice that isolates you further. And it really shouldn't even be something that you are specifically setting aside time to do. I mean, do that. It can be very relaxing. But really making it sort of a, a nice little everyday habit, I think is going to be a little bit more helpful to you. So those are the big ones that researchers recommend. In addition, I would also recommend sleeping. A lot of maladaptive daydreamers have a habit of daydreaming in bed. You know, sometimes all night you, you go to bed and then the sun's coming up and you haven't slept. And then you have to go through the whole day dead ass tired and then you do it all again. I swear I didn't sleep for most of my adult life. Tired brains though, they drift away. Not just for MDers, for everyone. That's just how it works. You're more likely to slip into a daydream when you're tired and feel less motivated and feel more gross in general. A good night's rest will help you see a difference in your day to day. And that's really not easy either to get into a good healthy sleep cycle, but it is worth putting the effort in. No great revelations about that. It's all the standard advice. Stick to a schedule cold dark room. Avoid caffeine and screens late at night. Get, get at least like 30 minutes of sunlight a day. It, it does help you sleep for some reason. And maybe in some cases even try even try a sleep aid or something. Look look into those. Do, you, do your proper research. But I, I use one and it does help. I have a video on that somewhere down there. And my second advice, keep a journal. Write out maybe what you daydreamed about, but then also bring your real feelings into it. Just kind of go ape psychoanalyzing yourself. You might notice some things, but it's really a good way to get back in touch with who you actually are and get you thinking about what you're actually feeling and how those feelings might express themselves. It's a great tool for self-exploration. Highly recommend. And three, join a community. Much like journaling, it's just, it's just a way to talk about it, but this time with other people who can relate. Find the right one for you. If, if you find that one community in particular is, is actually making you daydream more. If you find that they're making you feel bad for yourself or something, it, take a step back. I want you to feel better and motivated about yourself and empowered even. That's kind of all I got. I know, I know there's no revelations in this video, but there's a reason these are the standard recommendations because they are the most effective and the most helpful if you, if you give them the time that they deserve. I'm going to put some helpful links in the description. So check that out. Let other people know in the comments what's worked for you. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.